Our next chapter is going to take a look at working with exponents, and as we do, we need to be aware of the various properties we can use with exponents. There are five of them we're going to focus on here. The first is the product rule, and to set this up, we're going to consider a cubed times a squared. Well, a cubed times a squared. A cubed means three a's multiplied together, and a squared means two a's multiplied together. So if I were to count them, there's a total of five a's multiplied together there. A quicker way to do that, though, you might notice is we had a cubed and a squared. If we add those exponents, it could have given us a to the fifth. So the rule we're going to use here is if we have a to some exponent, times a to some other exponent, we can keep the base and add the exponents. So for example, if I had 5a cubed b to the seventh times 2a to the ninth b to the second c to the fourth, if I wanted to multiply those together, we can multiply 5 times 2 like always to get 10. For the a's, we can add 3 plus 9 to get a total of 12 a's. For the b's, we'll add 7 plus 2 to get a total of 9, and c to the fourth. That's the product rule. Our second property that we want to be able to use is the quotient rule. To set up the quotient rule, let's think about a to the fifth divided by a cubed. Now if I have that, that means there's 5 a's on top of three a's. And if we were to reduce those a's, we see we're going to be left with a squared on the top. And you might see the rule that's going to come out of that is if I have a to some exponent divided by a to some other exponent, what we can do is we can subtract those exponents to get our answer. So for example, if I had 8m to the 7th n to the 4th over maybe negative 6m to the 5th n, we can still reduce that 8 over negative 6 like always by dividing by 2 to get 4 over negative 3. But for the variables, we'll subtract the exponents. 7 minus 5 gives us m squared, and 4 minus 1 gives us n to the third, and we've simplified using the quotient rule. Our next set of rules are called the power rules, and there's actually three power rules that are closely related. So for the first one, the power of a power rule, we're going to consider a squared cubed. Now a squared cubed, that cubed means the a squared appears three times. And we already know from our exponent properties that if the base is the same, I can add those exponents, which is going to give us a to the sixth. This leads to our rule. You may have noticed if we've got a to some power raised to some other power, the way I could have gotten that answer from 2 and 3 to get 6 is multiply those numbers together. So we'll multiply m times n together. And so for number 3, an example, if I have 6n cubed and I raise that to the second power, I still square the 6 like always to get 36, but for the n to the third squared, we're going to multiply those exponents together to get n to the sixth. Our second power rule is the power of a product rule, and that's going to be problems like a times b cubed. Well, if I have a times b cubed, that means the a times b occurs three times, which means individually each a occurred three times and each b occurs three times. And you can see what's really happening is that exponent goes on to each factor in the expression. So if I have a rule where we're going to have a times b raised to some m power, the rule says that exponent can go on to both, a to the m, b to the m. So for example, if I had 5a to the fourth b to the third power, 
I'm going to put that exponent on each part. The cubed goes on the 5, making it 5 cubed, or 125. The cubed goes on a to the fourth, and 4 times 3 is 12. And the cubed goes on to the b, giving us b to the third for our answer using the power of a product rule. Power of a quotient then is going to work really similar. We'll have a over b raised to maybe the third power. And so you know that means we have a over b written three times, which means on top we see the a occurring three times and the b occurring three times. And that's going to kind of imply our rule Similar to the power of a product rule, the power of a quotient rule says if I have a over b raised to some power, I'm going to put that power on the top, and I'm going to put that power on the bottom. So let's do an example over here on the right where we have negative 5m cubed over 9n to the fourth and all of that is going to be squared. Well, we'll put the squared on each of the factors. So the squared goes on the negative 5. Squared is 25. The squared goes on the m cubed. And the power of a power means we multiply to get m to the sixth. The square goes on the 9 to give us 81. And the square goes on the n to the fourth to give us n to the eighth when we multiply those exponents. There's two properties left to look at. The first one is the zero power. And to set this up, we're going to look at the example a cubed over a cubed. Now, if I do a cubed over a cubed, that means we've got three a's on top of three a's. And they're all going to reduce out, which leaves behind one in the numerator and one in the denominator. And one divided by one is one. However, if I had used the subtraction rule, we would have said a to the 3 minus 3, which is a to the 0, which means a to the 0 power, our rule, anything to the 0 power is always going to be equal to 1, regardless of what it is. Let's put our example over here to the right, C. Let's consider 3x cubed yz to the fourth, all that raised to the 0 power. Well, anything to the 0 power, no matter what it is, is always going to equal 1. So that's all there is to the 0 power problem. Finally, we'll look at negative exponents. That's the last property we need to know. To set up negative exponents, let's consider a cubed over a to the fifth. Well, if we do that with 3 a's on top and 5 a's on the bottom, we see they're going to reduce out, leaving a 1 in the numerator. We end up with 1 over a squared. But if I had used the subtraction property, we would have had a to the 3 minus 5, which is equal to a to the negative 2. Notice that a to the negative 2, then, is the same as 1 over a squared. That means a negative exponent moves things to the denominator. The rule, which is kind of written out a couple ways, we see a to the negative m. A negative exponent means it's going to move to the denominator as a positive exponent. Or if I have 1 over a to the negative m, where the negative exponent's in the denominator, it's going to move up to the numerator as a positive exponent. Or if I've got an entire fraction raised to the negative exponent, that means the a goes to the bottom and the b goes to the top. It flips both parts of the fraction. It flips the entire fraction over with the m exponent using the power of a quotient rule going on to both. So for example, if I've got 7x to the negative fifth over 3 to the negative 1, yz to the negative fourth, all of those pieces with a negative exponent are going to move. So that means the 7 stays on top. 
The x to the negative fifth moves to the bottom. The three to the negative first moves to the top. The y stays on the bottom, and the z to the negative fourth moves to the top. And when those exponents move around, that's going to make them all positive. And we can actually go one step further to simplify multiplying seven times three to get 21 z to the fourth over x to the fifth y. We have five properties of exponents you want to get comfortable with. Product, quotient, power, which has three parts to it, zero, and negative exponents.